Messengers. We are back for another week of classes in Genesis Junction. I miss you. It's been three weeks of being back online and it looks like it's gonna be this way through November and I surely hope we can get back together for December but until then I hope you are all following along with me here on your computers okay um, the materials are in the mailbox so make sure you remind your parents to stop by and get the take-home sheets and the resources so that you can follow along using your sheets at home while we're talking about our lesson and let's review our Bible truths to get started all right so our first Bible truth for this unit was because God is just what must he do when we sin because he is just what must he do when we sin yes he must punish us right because he is just because he made up the rules the commands he must punish us but what word means that God may not punish us as we deserve he may not punish us even though we broke that law do you remember mercy yes mercy when God shows mercy he won't punish us when we break that law if we say we're sorry and we turn away from it and don't do it again and we've been seeing that through our lessons this entire unit and the unit before how merciful he is when we turn away from doing the wrong things can we trust God all the time oh yes we can because he is faithful yes he is faithful and what word means that God knows all things? He knows everything. That big old word, omniscient. Omniscient, right? He knows everything. He knows everything because he created everything. He knows everything historically past present what's going to happen in the future he knows everything all right so those are our bible truths for this unit now let's get right to our lesson okay so let's review a little bit and we have been learning about the kings in judah and there were many kings who did what was evil, right? Many kings that did what was evil, but there was a couple that did what was right in the sight of the Lord. And who remembers, who remembers the good kings we talked about? Do you remember this good king? Do you remember his name? Yes, this was King Hezekiah, right? King Hezekiah. And he prayed to the Lord for help. When the Assyrians were surrounding the city of Jerusalem, God answered Hezekiah's prayer and sent his angel to kill so many of the enemy soldiers that they had to go home. Right? Yeah. That was a miracle, wasn't it? Okay. Who can tell me another of the good kings that we studied? Yeah. Well, yeah, Joash started out good, right? But then he kind of ended not so good. 
Who did we talk about last week? Another one that started when he was just a young boy. Yes, King Josiah. Do you remember? Years later, after Hezekiah, there was another good king, and his name was Josiah. He decided to follow the Lord when he was young. Josiah wanted to please God, so he destroyed all the idols in the land, cleaned out the temple, he fixed it up so the people could worship God in the right way again. And when they were cleaning, they found what? Yes, they found the book of the law, which had been lost. And when it was read to Josiah, he showed great sadness for it revealed to him how they have been sinning against God this whole time. And so Josiah read the book of the law to the people and they all promised to follow God. But guess what happened after King Josiah died? What do you think happened? Do you think that people still followed God after he died? Or do you think maybe they turned back to their old ways of not following God? Sadly, the people did turn back to worshiping idols. Once again, they disobeyed God and started following the false gods. Today we're going to learn about a man named Jeremiah. He was a prophet to the people. We've been talking about lots of prophets. You can probably, if I said name a prophet, you can probably name lots of prophets. Shout it at the camera because we've talked about lots of them, haven't we? He was a prophet to the kings in the time of Judah during the reign of five different kings, including Josiah. Okay, so Jeremiah actually wrote two books in the Bible. He wrote Jeremiah, the book Jeremiah, good name for a book written by him. And he also wrote the book of Lamentations. Okay. So let's find out a bit about Jeremiah. We are going to get into our Bibles and we're going to go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1. Okay, so get your Bibles out. And let's go there. To Jeremiah. It's kind of just past the middle of the book, middle of your Bibles. So if you open it towards the middle, you'll be pretty close to finding Jeremiah. And we're going to read right out of the first chapter. And we're going to look at verses 4 and 5. Okay? Let's read them together. The Lord spoke these things to me. Before I made you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart for a special work. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Wow. So that was God talking to Jeremiah. God told Jeremiah that he consecrated him. He set him apart to do a special job just for him. When did it say that God consecrated him? Yeah, before he was even born. God knew him and had a special plan for him before he was even born. Isn't that amazing that God knows us even when 
when we're still in the belly of our moms. He knows us and he has a special plan for us. So what did it say that the special job was that God had for Jeremiah? It said he would be a prophet. Yes, Jeremiah would be a prophet. As a prophet, Jeremiah would bring God's messages, directly what God says to him, he will tell the people, to Judah and to other nations, it says. This was a big job, and Jeremiah had some doubts. He was worried that he wouldn't be able to speak well. How many of you would feel so nervous if Miss Christie said, okay, it's your turn, Aaron, or it's your turn, Leo, or it's your turn, Kyra, to come up to the front and speak to everyone today. Would you feel nervous about getting up and giving the message for class today? But God told Jeremiah, he said, do not be afraid for I will be with you and I will give you the right words to say. Isn't it great that whenever God gives us a job, he also will help us to do it. If he called us to do it, he will help us through it. He's awesome that way. Jeremiah obeyed God and he spoke the Lord's word to all the people. Sometimes God had Jeremiah use different objects to help the people get a picture of the lesson that God was trying to teach them and to warn them to turn away from their sin and back to God. God told Jeremiah to go to the potter's house where he could watch the potter make something out of clay. Hmm. How many of you have made something out of clay before? Raise your hand if you've made something out of clay before. Well, maybe Play-Doh? Yeah, we've probably all played with Play-Doh, especially if you've been part of our kids' church because in the nursery we have Play-Doh and we've used it in class before and I'm sure at home or in preschool you've played with Play-Doh. So, this clay is different from the clay that they would have used back in the time of Jeremiah, but we can still form it into different shapes, right? So who knows what a potter does? Who knows what a potter does? A potter works with clay and let me get it up here so you can see this picture real close what he's doing here a potter works with clay and he forms it into usable things like plates bowls cups and jars potters use a mix of clay and water on a flat wheel that spins very fast to form the shapes they want. Then they take the clay off the wheel and let it dry for several days. It could be decorated, then baked in a special fireplace called a kiln to make it nice and hard. After that, it could be sold and used in someone's home. Right? So, Maybe you can look around your house and you might, 
Maybe your parents have a, a vase that was made out of clay, or maybe you made something in art class and then it was dried and then you painted it and it was glazed and maybe you have it on display in your house, something you made out of clay. Okay, so, and part of our homework, there's an activity to make your own little pinch pop and to decorate it, okay? This is a very sad bowl. It wouldn't be very big. Put a couple Cheerios in here. That's about all I could use, <laughs> use this for. Okay, so let's read about what Jeremiah saw when he went to go visit the potter. So let's go back to our Bibles and we're gonna skip over to chapter 18 now in Jeremiah. And we're going to read verses 3 and 4. Okay? All right. So I went down to the potter's house. I saw him working at the potter's wheel. He was making a pot from clay. But something went wrong with it. So the potter used that clay to make another pot. He used his hands to shape the pot the way that he wanted it to be. So, what was the potter doing when Jeremiah got there? Yeah, he was working on his wheel. He was spinning around and he was trying to form a pot, right? But what was wrong with the vessel that the potter was trying to make? He was trying to make a pot or a vessel. And what happened? Yeah, it said something went wrong or it, it was spoiled. Like maybe one side was just way too crooked and the other side was, you know, it wasn't nice and straight. So what did the potter do if it wasn't turning out just right? What did he do? Yeah, it said he just started all over. He punches all the clay back down and then he starts all over again. Hmm. So the potter started to form his clay into a vessel, but as he worked on it, it got all messed up but instead of throwing it away, he squished it back down and he started over. When he was finished, he had something different than what he started to make the first time. Jeremiah watched as the potter squished the clay and started over. God told Jeremiah that the people of Judah were like this clay, and God was like the potter. Judah had been spoiled by sin, and God was warning that he could destroy them like the potter destroyed the first thing he made. If the potter can, or if the people continued to do evil, God would have to smash them like the clay and then remake them. God also told Jeremiah that if people turned away from evil, he would save them. God wanted the people to repent. He wanted them to turn away from their sin and turn back to him. But these people were stubborn. They would not listen. Their hearts were evil. They did not care about following God. Even after being warned, they still wanted to follow their own evil ways. On another day, God told Jeremiah to go to the temple 
and warn the people again that God was going to bring disaster on them if they did not turn away from their ways and follow him. While Jeremiah was saying these things at the temple, the chief officer named Pashur came by and heard Jeremiah. Pashur was the head of the priests who kept the order and he took care of all the problems in the temple, much like a security guard. He didn't like what Jeremiah was saying one bit. So he took Jeremiah and he beat him. Then Peshur put Jeremiah in the stocks. Do you know what the stocks are? I have a picture of some stocks. <laughs> I should have brought it. Maybe I'll post it on the Facebook page. So if you want to see a picture of some stocks, I'll post me, Miss Christie, in the stocks. <laughs> but that's where they would put people. Their heads sticking out. They would be locked in with their hands out. And they wouldn't be able to move in between these pieces of wood. And people would come by as they're walking around at the market and to be made an example of really to see this will happen to you if you do bad but jeremiah wasn't doing bad jeremiah was declaring the word of the lord and the people were doing bad but they didn't want to hear it not even the priest people often call jeremiah the weeping prophet what does weeping mean? Yeah, crying, right? Crying and crying and crying, not just sniffling, but crying and crying. Jeremiah cried because the people would not turn back to God. Instead, the people punished Jeremiah for bringing the word of the Lord to them. They didn't like being told that they were wrong. Jeremiah knew that God would send disaster. An enemy would come and capture all the people and take them away just like they did to their relatives in the north, in Israel. All of these things made Jeremiah very sad. And he cried and he wept over them. Jeremiah's sadness over sin is a bit like how God feels when we continue to sin. Instead of making God sad, we can please him when we tell him we're sorry and we ask him to forgive us and then we turn from the bad ways and do good. And we ask him to please help us to not do these things anymore. Let's do that right now. Can we pray right now? Lord, we just thank you for being so merciful. God, we know your word tells us and we know that you want us to turn back to you. And your word tells us that you will forgive us, that you are faithful to forgive us when we ask you, Lord. Father, please help us. We know we are sinners. We know we do things wrong, but please forgive us. Remind us to ask you for forgiveness and help us to do what is right and not to do what is wrong. Lord, we want to be with you. We want to follow you. Lord, help us to follow you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, amen. Now let's review our memory verse and I'll show you your homework and we'll be done. That was a quick lesson today. So our memory verse is Ephesians. Have you
you been practicing? I want to see you saying it or hear you saying it. Have your parents record you and put it on our Facebook page. Miss Christy will have some things for you if you do, since we can't meet and get together for those check marks. Ephesians 2, 4 through 5, let's say it together. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And here's our homework. All right. For the Adirondack Mountaineers. Here's a little activity on your take-home sheet. You have to circle the, the pots. Here the potter was making a bunch of pots, but some of them do not look so good. So you need to circle the ones that were the oops mistakes that he has to do again. And don't forget your memory verses are always on your take-home sheets. And there is the Justin and Jesse story that is available online that you can color the coloring sheet that goes with the Justin and Jesse story. There's also a coloring sheet that has to do with our, our lesson today. And for the older class, here's your class notes. There are a few more scripture verses to look up to help you find the answers. Of course, all your answers for the blanks are found in these pots, so you should be able to match them up there. And your memory verse, same one, Ephesians 2, 4 through 5, is on your take-home sheet. And there's a little code to try to figure out for the lesson there. And then for both classes, I want you to make your own pinch pots. And I'd like you to show me your pinch pots. So have your parents take a picture and send it to me. Or you can post it on the Facebook page and show everyone if you're making something out of clay or out of Play-Doh. It would be great if you could get real clay. Maybe uh, if your mom's out shopping at Hobby Lobby. Putting a punch in there. <laughs> um, you can get some real clay if you don't have any at home or it's supposed to actually get warm it snowed the other day but now it's nice and warm maybe you can go out and just play in the mud maybe you got a good mud puddle and then you don't have to go buy anything and to make some mud and try to make your own pinch pots out of the mud because really that's where the clay comes from Real clay comes from in the ground and it's just very tight knit uh, material that's made out of a kind of stone that's been, the really ground up really fine that's found in the earth. And when you find a strain of it or a vein of it, of clay, uh, then you can make bricks and you can make your pottery and it was used for all kinds of things and still is used for all kinds of things. So you can put beads around the outside of your pinch pot or if you're outside using mud, you can take some sticks or if you can find some flowers yet or anything to decorate it with. And I would love to see the pictures of those, okay? All right. That is it for today. Thanks for joining us, and I will see you here next week. Same channel, and we will go on to our next lesson, okay? I miss you. Bye-bye. <laughs>